Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Adding Game Sounds where today we're going to be looking at adding some damage sounds I suppose you could call them. We want to add some sounds that play whenever the boss of level 5 takes damage either by the player shooting its shield or by the player attacking it with the staff and actually doing some damage. Before we start, if you'd like to learn more about FMOD and Unity or would just like to stay updated with what I'm doing on this channel and on my website, then you can subscribe to my newsletter where I update people via email uh, with what's going on uh, and let you know about any of my online courses where I teach things like this, FMOD and Unity. So I have a link in the description for you to sign up to that and you'll also get a free lesson to my FMOD and Unity course when you do. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're doing today. Like I said, we want the boss to react whenever we hit it, either by shooting it or attacking it with our staff. So before we look at how we're going to do that, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate those mechanics for you in case you're unfamiliar. To give us some context before we actually look at those mechanics, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the boss fight briefly and also recap what we did last time where we added sounds to its introduction cutscene. <laughs> Okay, that's where we're at so far with this boss. Now, the way it works is that you've got two, or the boss has two health bars. It's got a health bar for its shield, and it's got like a main health bar. The idea is you attack the shield first. Once the shield's gone, you do a bit of damage to its main health, and then the shield pops up again, and you do that about three times. So the way you take the shield down is by shooting it. So I'm gonna shoot it a couple of times just to show you what that looks and sounds like. There you go. Now, thanks to an old episode, we've actually got a sound that's playing whenever the bullet hits the shield. Because what we did is we set up a system that whenever one of our bullets hits uh, an inanimate object, like a wall and a piece of environment, then it makes like a little fizzle sound. But if it hits an enemy, it has a different sound that plays, which has a bit more crunch to it. So it feels like you're actually shooting something. Now, partly what we're gonna do today is adjust that system we created so that when we shoot this shield specifically, we get a bit more of a sci-fi sound and it sounds like the shield's kind of repelling the bullet away. So the way you deal real damage is by hitting its core here. And there we go. So those are the two things. We obviously want a sound to play there, which we don't have at the moment. So that's our mission for today. We want a different sound for when the bullets hit the shield. And we also want a sound to play when the player attacks the boss and actually does some proper damage to it. Now let's start with that main one where we attack it with our melee staff and actually do real damage. Before we look at that though, we first need to kind of understand how the actual boss, the gunner it's called, uh, works in this Unity project. So as you can see in the hierarchy tab, under the player assets menu, we've got an object here called gunner. And gunner is in the scene, but it's not active because, well, we'd have to play that cutscene first. Now if we click on the click on it rather, click on the inspector and click this little tick box next to its name, we can see it appear. So this is the game object that we're interacting with and fighting with. Now, if we open this object up by clicking on the arrow next to it, we can see all the children objects uh, underneath it. So the gunner master, which holds all the sort of main scripts and, you know, controls how this object works. Uh, and we've also got some separate ones. So the gunner shield, which is interesting, that's its own object. So that's something we're gonna look at in a bit with the bullet sounds. Damage zone is one that we're interested in today. So if we double click on this and zoom in, this is like a trigger area, as you can see, that sits around the gunner's core. Now, whenever the player attacks that area and the collider that's on the player's spear goes inside this circle, that's a script on the gunner here registers that and then takes damage. And the way that works is with this damageable script. So in this game, every object that can take damage, i.e. the player and all the enemies, have this script, damageable, and it contains their health, uh, a few other fields such as how long you want the player or the enemy to have invulnerability after they take damage, just so they don't die immediately. Uh, and yeah, other stuff. So this is what we're gonna want to interact with um, in order to trigger our sounds. Now, if we look down a bit, we've got a few Unity events. And by the name of those Unity events, we can tell when they're going to activate. Uh, so we've got one called On Health Set, 
on take damage, on die, and on gain health. Now, if you'll remember back to the last episode, or even the episode I linked in that episode where we first looked at Unity events, a Unity event is a really easy way to set up interactability in your games. The idea is just using the Inspector tab and the Hierarchy tab, you don't have to get into the code of things, uh, you can basically create a function that when it activates, will activate other functions anywhere in your game. So if these game objects here have scripts with functions on, then we can click on the object, drag them over to one of these boxes, choose the function we want to trigger, uh, and yeah, that will happen whenever, in this case, the, enemy, the boss takes damage, as we can tell by the name of the event. Now, before we start messing around with the Unity event, let's jump into FMOD, as I have a couple of events that I've created. They're real dead simple events. Uh, the first one is called Take Damage, and this is going to play whenever the gunner takes damage via a melee attack. So in my sound effects, enemies, gunner folder, I've just right clicked and created a new 3D event as I want this to be localized and I want it to sound like it's coming from a specific area. And I've called it take damage. And the way it works is pretty simple. On this track, I've got a multi-instrument. If I create a new track quickly, you create a multi-instrument by right clicking and clicking add multi-instrument. And then I've added three specific audio files to it. So Gunner Impact 01, 02, 03, which sound like this. Ooh. Last one. So if I play this to you a couple of times. And that's that, real dead easy. Once you've made this event, you wanna hold Control and S to save your project. Then to actually copy the this event into your sound bank, which is a file that Unity reads and sort of basically contains all your audio, you press F7 on your keyboard. Oh, one final thing if you haven't already, if your event says unassigned next to it, right click it, go to assign to bank and click master bank and then that, and then press F7 on your keyboard and then it'll copy over uh, into Unity. Now let's go back into Unity. Now we've got that event. Let's look at how we can use the Unity event, very different to an FMOD event, uh, to trigger it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we need a script that's going to be able to, that contains a function that plays our event. Like we looked at in the last episode, we have just that script which we created ages ago. So uh, on damage zone, I'm just minimizing all the scripts so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to click add component and we want to use this script to trigger audio. Now again, if you haven't got this script or if you missed the episode where we made it, I'll have a link in the description so you can copy and paste it off my website. Cool. Then in the event section, we want to use the search tool. We want to go sound effects. Uh, enemies, gunner, and then take damage. That event I just created and demonstrated to you. There we go. So now what we've done is basically we've assigned this event to, oh, whoops, <laughs> to this script here. So this script now has a reference to that event. Um, however, we need to trigger it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the damageable script and take a look again at the on take damage unity event. Now, what we want to do is click on the plus icon, and this will basically allow us to add a new function to it that will trigger when the enemy takes damage. Then what we want to do is locate the function we want to trigger. Now, the function is within, within that script I just showed you, uh, which is attached to this object, damage zone. So let's click on damage zone and hold click in the hierarchy tab. Let's drag it over to this box here that says object and release. Now we've referenced the object. Now we want to reference the script that contains the function. So under no function, let's click, go down to trigger audio. Again, that's the script we just added. Then finally, the function we want to add is play one shot. So click on that. And that is pretty much it. That's it. We're done now. Okay, moment of truth. There we go. There we go, so it lets out a little pain, roboty, uh, screechy sound. Brilliant, so that works perfectly. Next on our agenda is uh, changing the sounds that the bullets make when they impact with the shield. First, I'm gonna jump into F-Bond and show you the event I've created specifically for this um, instance. Now in my sound effects folder, let's close enemies and go into my interactables folder. Now you remember way back in another previous episode which we where we looked at the bullet impact sounds, uh, I'll have a link to that in the top right corner of this video if you want to check that out. We set up an event called Bullet Impact and the way this works is that when this is triggered it will actually, instead of playing a sound itself, it will trigger one of two other events 
Those events were called bullet impact enemy and bullet impact object. So you imagine when a bullet hits something, bullet uh, impact plays, then depending on what you hit, it will play one of two other events, if, you, if that makes sense. Imagine it like branching off of that one starting event, the main event, bullet impact. Uh, the way it determined what event it played was with this parameter here, bullet collide. Now when we last looked at it, this event Sorry, this parameter looks different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly change it back to how you might recognize it if you've been following along with this series. Okay, so it probably looked something like this, and the way it worked, it's quite simple. Whenever this uh, event is triggered, it, the parameter bullet collider defaults at one, okay? Now in our script, uh, a, whenever our bullet hits something, it makes a check. It checks to see what it hit. If it hits something that has a damageable script on it, which is the script that we just looked at where we added the attack sound to, um, if it has that script, then, or sorry, if it doesn't have that script, say the bullet hits like a wall, then the parameter won't change. So if it doesn't change and it stays on one, then the cursor here stays on one on top of this reference instrument. Uh, and what this reference instrument is doing is referencing an event called bullet impact object. That's an entirely separate event here, which sounds like this. There you go, just a little fizzle, as if the bullet's kind of, you know, fizzling out, not doing any damage to anything. Let's go back to bullet impact. Uh, now, new scenario, let's say the bullet does hit something with a damageable script, so say, an enemy. Then what happens, in, instead of just leaving this event as is, the parameter bullet collide switches from one to two. Now it's on top of this reference event here, which is referencing event called bullet impact enemy. So if we take a look, at that event, something else is going on. That sounds like this. There we go, so it has a bit more bit more meat to it, a bit more fizzle. It sounds like something's burning, essentially, like flesh of an enemy. Now, what we want to do is create a new event, so we're also going to put on this parameter here. We're gonna extend the range of the parameter so it no longer ranges from one to two. And if this third scenario happens, where a bullet specifically hits the shield, then we want a new event to play. Now, to create that new event, what you wanna do is, again, go to your main folder, Interactables, right click, click new 3D, uh, and go from there. Now I've already done this, it's called Bullet Impact Shield, so I'm gonna click on that. This is my new uh, event, and this is what I want to play when the bullet hits a shield. It sounds like this. There we go, cool, not too loud, quite simple. It's just gonna sit in the background, just add a bit of detail when it does hit the shield. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can reference this event in our main one called Bullet Impact. First things first, we want to edit this parameter. So let's right click bullet collide. Let's go to edit parameter. Now at the moment it's type is continuous. And I think the reason why that is, is because back when we created this event, we were using a version of FMOD before two, where there was only, there wasn't a parameter type. You couldn't choose any of these. You just had this normal, that all your parameters looked like this, where they had a timeline and that's the only way you could set it. Uh, what we want to do is want to change that. So instead of the value of the parameter being anything between one and two, we want it to be whole numbers exclusively. The way we do that is by going to user and we change the type to discrete and let's click OK. Right, so it looks like for some reason, whenever I try and edit Bullet Collide, uh, FMOD crashes and I have no idea why, but I've got a plan to resolve this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straight up delete this parameter and I'm just gonna make it from scratch. And hopefully that resolves our issue. So I'm gonna right click on Bullet Collide. Let's go, uh, we don't wanna just remove references. We wanna replace it all together. New parameter will do. And I'm gonna call it Bullet Collide New. And I'll just change the name later. Let's go discrete. Uh, let's range it from one to three, and let's see if this works. Oh, wait, the initial value, we also need to set that to one because it needs to sit within this range. Let's try that again. Scale shouldn't matter. There we go, we have our new parameter. And for some reason, it's changed its name back to parameter one. So what, what I'm gonna do is first delete that bullet collide parameter, uh, and then I'm gonna replace this name, the name of this parameter with bullet collide, because the way we set it up in Unity is that it works by reading, it's checking for a parameter specifically called bullet collide. So it's really important that we get the name right. What I'm gonna do is go to window, I'm gonna go to preset browser, I'm gonna find my bullet collide uh, parameter, I'm gonna right click on it, and delete. Gone, not an issue anymore. Then we're going to right click on parameter one, edit, let's change it to bullet collide. 
let's click OK. And there we go, the name's changed. Right, now let's look at referencing our events. So the first event we want to reference is the bullet impact object event. So I'm gonna click on it in the events tab, drag it over into field one of the parameter, and there we go, it's referenced. Next, we want to do bullet impact enemy, and that's gonna sit in two. Finally, we're gonna do the newest addition to the bullet impact family. Uh, bullet impact shield, click, drag, and slot that into free. And there we go, the parameters finally set up. Now let's hit Control S to save. Let's press F7. And then once that's done, we can jump back into Unity and look at how we can trigger our new event to play. Now, for those of you who did watch the uh, episode where we looked at the bullet impact uh, sounds and events before, you'll remember that we edited an script called bullet. Now this script is attached to any projectile in the game uh, and basically does all the calculating it needs to do for any projectile. So it detects if it hits something, if that thing has a dam damageable script or not, etc. Now, as you can see, it's already referencing uh, some of the FMOD events, which we're going to be using, which is brilliant. So a projectile event uh, for when it's launched and an impact event for when it collides with something. Now to find this game object, we're looking, well, the script that's attached to the game object, in your project tab, you want to open the assets folder, then the 2D game kit, prefabs, VFX, Ellen, and then double click on bullet. Then you just scroll down the inspector and you'll find the bullet script. And again, I'll have a link in the description where you can copy and paste this script uh, straight into your project. So let's right click, let's click edit script, and let's take a look at the changes we want to make to it. Now in your script, you're going to want to scroll down to line 91. So on line 91, this is something that we added way back in the day where we looked at it originally in that other episode. Uh, this line, basically this whole event, let's quickly talk about this. So the on bullet hit damageable event uh, triggers whenever a bullet hits something with that damageable script attached to it. Once that happens, it goes through all of this stuff, does a bit of calculating, works out what it hits, but most importantly, it triggers our, oh, not OBS, it triggers our bullet impact event and sets the bullet collide parameter to a value, either one or two at the moment, because three doesn't exist yet. Now, because this function only triggers when it hits something with that damageable script, we know that we want to set that parameter to, to two so that it plays the event that we want to play when it hits an enemy. So that's why on line 91, we're accessing the bullet impact event instance, which contains an instance of our bullet impact event. We're using the set parameter by name function to find that parameter, then set a value to it. Uh, then we're entering the name of the parameter, which again is bullet collide. And that's why the name of it was very important. Then finally, we're giving it the value two, which sets it from one to two, right? So now, how are we going to change this? So now in our scenario, this function will trigger if it hits an enemy, but it will also trigger if it hits that shield. Now the reason why, let's go back to Unity. If I click on the gunner shield object, which is a child object of the gunner master uh, object, uh, it sort of, but it sort of acts as its own entity. It's got its own health bar and everything, and it sort of encompasses the real enemy, the gunner, until it's destroyed, and then that gives you a chance to attack the gunner, right? Now because of this, it has, if I scroll up, let's close some of these scripts just to neaten this up a bit so you can see. Give me one second. This, there you go. So the damageable script, again, this is back on the shield object, just like it was on the damage zone object. Now it looks slightly different because those unity events we looked at earlier are being used slightly different. So the on take damage event is triggering different functions. The on die event uh, is triggering stuff, which it wasn't when it was on the uh, damage zone objects, as you can see, it's not being used, but here it is. So long story short, it's using the same system, uh, just slightly differently. So whenever our bullet hits the shield, it's gonna check to see if it has this script. And if it does, it's going to set the bullet collide parameter to two, and thus this parameter is gonna to go to two and the bullet impact event, sorry, bullet impact enemy event is triggered. Now, we don't want it to be set to two, we want it to be set to three. So we need to add a condition here or a check to tell our script to say, hey, before you set the parameters value, check to see what object you're hitting. If you hit the shield, then we want you to set it to three. If you hit anything other than the shield, then leave it as two. 
Now, there's a few ways we could do this. We could use an if statement, but I'm gonna show you a new type of operator today uh, to use in this scenario. And it's called the conditional operator. Now the conditional operator, it looks like this. It sort of involves a question mark and a colon. And it basically works in the exact same way an if statement works, except you can write it all in one line. What it does is it checks for a condition. In our case, that condition is, is the object we've hit the shield? If that condition is true, so yes, we've hit the shield, then it will set, it will do something for you, basically. It will give you a result. So for us, we want to set our parameters to free. However, if that condition is not met, say we hit something that isn't a shield, it will do something entirely different. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I've made a little script just to demonstrate this and show you the similarities between it and the if statement, which we've looked at many times before. What I've got is two functions and two variables. Both of them are integers, so they contain numbers. One's called x, one's called y. Now in function one, uh, I've got an if statement, as you can see. Now what it does is it checks for our condition, and depending on that condition, it does one of two things. So if x is equal to, or is the same as y, if that's true, then we're going to set x to equal three, okay? Uh, so as we know, if statements work, they have a condition in the brackets and a, in the sort of normal brackets. Then in the curly brackets, they have a result of that condition if it's true. However, if this condition is not true, so if x does not equal y, then the else statement is triggered instead and the result of that else statement, which in this case, you can, as you can see, is x is being set to four. Now let's look at function two. Function two does the exact same thing, it's just written differently. Instead of using the if statement, we're using the conditional operator. So what we wanna do is set x to a new value. However, instead of just saying, let's set x to four, we're going to set it to either two numbers depending on a condition. And that condition is the exact same condition as what we looked at in the if statement. Is x equal the same as y? Now, as you can see, following the condition, we've written the question mark. And this is how the question mark conditional operator works. You write your condition to the left of the question mark, okay? Then you write the result based on that condition to the right. Now, if this condition on the left is true, then the result that will be triggered or happen is next to the question mark. It's to the right of the question mark, but to the left of this colon, if that makes sense. So the colon basically separates the two possible results in the same way that these curly brackets and the curly brackets under the else statement separate the two results in our if statement. So if x does equal y, if this condition is true, the result to the left of the colon is set. So x would become free. However, if the condition is false, then the result to the right of the colon becomes true. So x would equal four. So let's quickly go over that one more time. The way the conditional operator works is that you write a condition that you want to check for uh, first, then you follow it with your question mark and you're using the question mark, you separate the condition with two of the possible results uh, and the colon sits in the middle to separate those two results. So again, if the condition is met, the result on the left of the colon becomes true. If it's not met, the uh, result on the right is met instead. Now, that's enough demonstrating how conditional operators work. Let's have a look at how we can use it in this script. So here in, this, in these two brackets here, uh, is this is where we set the result of our set parameter by name function, basically what value we want to set our parameter to. So what we want to write is use, we want to write that conditional operator and use it to give this function one of two different values, either the value two if it doesn't hit the shield or the value of three if it does. So first let's write our condition. We want to see if the damageable object is the shield itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna access the damageable object by writing damageable dot name. Now we might have covered this in another episode, I'm not too sure, but basically this function has a uh, parameter here called damageable of the damageable script type. Now I'm not gonna confuse you by going into this too much. All you need to know is that when this function is triggered, when that bullet hits something, a reference to whatever it's hit is stored in this word here, damageable. And specifically, it's a reference to this script. So this script, in a sense, is now contained in this word. Now using that, we're gonna do a bit of trickery to find out the name of the object that this script is attached to, okay? Now let's go back to our script. 
So we're going to say if the name of the object that the damageable script is attached to is equal to or is gunner shield. So that's our condition. Now let's follow it with the question mark or the conditional operator and let's decide what the results will be if it is or isn't. So if it if the object is called gunner shield, uh, the value we want to set the parameter to is free. But if it isn't, the value we want to set it to is two. Oh, and let's not use a uh, comma, that was wrong. Remember, we want to use a colon like that. Great, now hopefully that makes sense. So, when set parameter by name is triggered, it's first going to find the parameter called bullet collide and it's going to set it to one of two values. First, the script is going to check what it's hit, and if it's hit the gunner shield, it's going to set the parameter to free. But if it hits anything else not called gunner shield, it will set it to two. Now there are other ways to check what object we've hit. There's probably a bit more efficient, shall we say? We could use the tag system, which we've looked at before. That's one example. And the reason why I'm just checking its name, whilst it's not the most efficient, long story short, strings aren't ideal for checking things. And that's what this is, by the way. This is a string, that's called string data. Uh, I'm just using it because it's probably the simplest way to demonstrate this, right? We know its name, that's nice and easy. We don't have to look at another sort of system that Unity has, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's everything now. So let's save this script. As far as I'm aware, I think we're ready to test. So let's jump back into Unity. Let's play our scene and let's see if we get a different sound now when the bullet hits the shield. Okay, here we are. So I've skipped the cutscene. Now let's listen to what happens when I shoot the shield. There we go. We can hear that sort of sci-fi repel sound, oh, let's not die, uh, that we set up earlier. So let me get a bit closer so we can hear that a bit clearer. And now it sounds a bit more believable. Now if I shoot the gun, say, against this wall, we hear a different sound. So that's that other event we created earlier, bullet impact object, because it's just hitting a brick, a brick wall that doesn't have that damageable script on. But if we hit the shield, it does have the damageable script. Oh, I'm doing terribly at this. So we hear a different sound. There we go. Now, unfortunately, you can't shoot the core of this object. You, uh, enemy, sorry. You have to melee it. So if we do that, we hear that impact sound that we set up earlier. Brilliant. And that's that, job done. We now have some damage sounds for our big fat boss monster. Yeah, hopefully that was nice and simple. Started rambling a bit there when we started talking about conditional operators, but hopefully you understood it. Long story short, it's an if statement. So as always, thanks again for watching this episode. That's one more episode closer to wrapping up this series. Hope you now understand where I'm going with this and this channel, thanks to my update video I did a few days ago. Um, and as always, yeah, if you have any comments, any feedback, issues, etc., let me know down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. And yeah, share, I guess. No, oh, that sounds a bit cheesy. Yeah, a bit of love on this video would certainly be appreciated. I've been Henry Scott. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.